welcome back to Spreadover Homestead. So today we're going to talk about one of the newest additions to our rabbit tree, the Trianta. So the Trianta is a smaller breed rabbit. Uh, senior weight's going to be four to six pounds. This is Theo, one of our senior bucks, and he sits just over five pounds. So as you can kind of see compared to my videos about the Harlequins and the Americans, they are a much, much smaller rabbit. Uh, that does not mean that they don't make a good rabbit. They're actually a pretty stocky little, little guy. They just take a lot longer to reach maturity. They're a good choice if you have kids in the house. They make good 4-H rabbits. Um, they just are an all-around really nice little rabbit. The bucks are super personable. Uh, you wouldn't know it by the way he's acting, but Theo is usually the first to the cage at night, wants to have his head scratched before I can even feed him. Super sweet, super personable, really laid back. I mean, he's feeling a little stressed because we're in the garage and there's smells in here that he's not used to. And he's not exactly being obnoxious. He's, he doesn't seem to mind a whole lot. He, his ear positions are, are showing that he's not super stressed. So um, just a really easy going breed. Now, I, I've had four does now in the Triantas. And I will say that for people who want to do 4-H, they want to get their kids started with a doe, I wouldn't really recommend that. Uh, it's not that they're mean. It's not that they're hard to handle. They're just very standoffish. I've noticed with the bucks that I've got, um, even the one that we have that came out of an abuse situation, he's far more willing to come to the front of the cage and be dealt with. He's easier to trim nails on, look at teeth, all the important stuff. The does are very much hands-off. Um, it's They'll be cooperative, like when I've got them out to do nails, they're cooperative enough, but they are rabbits you're going to have to go to the back of the cage for. They don't usually come to the front except at feeding time, and then when you try to touch them, they run away. <laughs> so definitely the boys are, are sweeter than the girls. Um, what's really cool about these little guys, so they are a compact rabbit, which is different than what you see in your New Zealands, your Californians, your Satins, which are a commercial type. Uh, the compact means that they are pretty much what it says, compact. So they typically have a shorter spine and um, are a lighter weight rabbit. So as you can kind of see, like if you've seen our video about choosing a good meat rabbit and I've got the champagne out, you can kind of see where they have a much higher rise. This guy, this is, this is it. He doesn't get super high. He's just got a shorter spine. It's just kind of the way they are. Um, some things that make these guys really super unique is this fur this bright 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 red color um, it, I've had a lot of people say it's very similar to uh, like an Irish setter red um, you have to kind of watch it there's a lot of different stuff going on in the Triantas I've seen quite a few at shows now and the color variance is really wild it shouldn't be but it is um, we see a lot of real copper to real mahogany and what you kind of want is somewhere in between um, you also sometimes will see uh, like a blue-gray, kind of a slate color, lacing along the ears, or even as an undertone to the fur. This is not something you want to see, but it is something that they're working on in the breed. Um, I kind of like these guys because compared to a lot of the smaller ones, they have this super chunky little head, which I think is kind of cute, and these little short ears. And so all together, I just think they're a cute little, just a cute little pudgy breed, I guess, <laughs> I guess compared to some other stuff. So the history on these guys, to kind of give you a little bit of an idea, uh, they are a, Euro a European breed. Uh, they were kind of developed from two different little red golden rabbits that were de being developed in Europe at the early 1900s. So what we had is a guy working on kind of a yellowy golden based rabbit in the early 1920s and then more of the real true red rabbit in about 1938, late 1930s, and that was happening in Germany. What took these guys so long to get to where they are now is a little thing called World War I, and consequently World War II. So because of that and the starvation that was going on in Europe, most of the foundation stock for these guys actually got eaten. <laughs> they were just, you know, a backyard kind of deal, and they were eventually used for food for the people over in Europe. The good thing is they were not annihilated by any stretch and there were some leftovers that were picked up and the breed has kind of developed from there. I would strongly recommend anybody who's really interested in the history because the history is pretty extensive. 
Uh, join the American Trianta Rabbit Breeders Association. I believe they've got some of the information on their website too. But when you join their association, they give it out this killer uh, booklet. It's got everything you need to know about Triantas, which is just kind of an interesting little look into how the breed was developed and uh, where they come from and where the breed hopes to go. So if you're thinking about raising these guys to show in like Arba shows, there are some things you need to know. Naturally, you can find it all in Arba's standard of perfection. The big thing being that 30 points is allotted just for the color alone. So the color is definitely, definitely a big deal. Uh, the fur is going to be another 20 points, which is also a big deal. Um, I can't think of another rabbit in the standard. I'm sure there is one where half of the points is allotted just in color and fur together. So it's kind of a big deal to have a nice coat on these guys. They are a rollback fur. And again, that color is so important to these guys. It is absolutely what makes the Trianta the Trianta. Beyond that, you've got 25 points for general body type, which I won't really go into. It's pretty much your standard com uh, compact body type. And then you've got 10 points for your head and your ears. So disqualifications in this breed are like I mentioned, if you've got that slate under color or the slate ear lacing along the edges. The other thing is white on the underbelly and tail. There is some cream that's more allowed in places, but really what you're looking for is as much red as you can get. Um, I've seen a couple now that at shows when they turn them over and the, the belly looks pretty much solid white. You don't really want that. You're looking for maybe not quite this deep of red. If you can get it, that's awesome. But a, a nice deep red all the way through on the under, underside, carrying all the way through the rabbit, even under the tail. That's really what you're looking for. So in terms of overall breeding, um, it, it seems to vary wildly by breeder. Six to nine months for the first litter is what I'm hearing. Uh, I bred my two younger girls for the first time now at like eight months and one seemed to know what was going on, the other one not so much. Litter sizes tend to be kind of small and I say small because I'm used to Harlequins, Champagnes and Americans which tend to have very large litters all the way up to 12. These guys right now of the three litters that I've had I seem to be running an average of like five. Um, from what I've heard that's pretty normal. Seven seems to be a big litter, so these guys aren't huge, huge prolific as far as overall numbers of offspring. Um, breeding seems to be pretty easy. They, from what I've seen so far, the mother, uh, mother and instinct is very, very good. Um, and that could just be that the does that I've had kindled so far have been experienced does. The only thing that I have found about these guys that I don't like, other than we do cull for meat and they are a smaller rabbit which means I have to hold them longer. The bucks spray. And if you've seen any if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I'm not big on pea sprayers. So that's kind of an irritating thing and it could just be where I've got my bucks currently. They're kind of in a row together and that could just be what the problem is. A lot of times bucks will spray if there are other bucks around. So that's been my biggest Thing about them that I don't really care for. Um, I'm going to be kind of moving rabbits around here shortly and see if I can kind of mitigate and stop the spraying because it's just, it's gross. It's irritating. Even the harlequins that are in the barn with them are looking at them like, oh, it's disgusting. So, um, like I said, that's been kind of my big, big observations. And I've had them um, not quite a year yet. So, uh, my first pair, my first trio actually were unpedigreed rescues. Um, kind of an abuse situation that I took them in and uh, they've turned around pretty good but I really like them they're, they're neat little rabbits we're gonna keep them around for a while I'm actually looking to expand the herd this year I've had a lot of interest from people that are interested in looking at them we seem to have a good amount of breeders like in the Midwest uh, it seems to be picking up steam here in the Pacific Northwest but not huge yet so I'm looking to bring in a couple more breeding animals Try and get the herd going a little bit. So if you're interested in Triantas, go ahead and drop me a message down in the bottom and I will get back to you. I might be even able to point you in the direction of some people that have them now. Um, but that's kind of the overview on the Triantas. Like I said, cool little rabbits, max weight six pounds, uh, seniors four to six, but max weight six pounds. Little litters, not too hard to deal with. Nice bucks, which I always appreciate, even though I wish the does could be a little bit more personable. And that color, 
I mean, check that color out. That is just the coolest color. So that's it. This time from Sprague River Homestead. If you've got questions, comments, concerns, insults, I get that too. Go ahead and leave them down in the comments and I will get back to you. The next breed we're going to cover, which will probably be a couple weeks out from now, is going to be the Champagne. And that is actually the last of the rabbits I actually breed. I do have some friends that uh, race different stuff, of course. And so uh, I'm going to hopefully hook up with a friend at a show coming up soon to do a video on Silver Fox because it seems like there is a lack of good Silver Fox information on the internet. So um, if there are other breeds that you're really looking for a video on, keep in mind I don't really know anybody who does a lot of the dwarf breeds, but if you've got other breeds that you want some information on, feel free to leave that down in the comments too and I will see who I can find to hook up with. Um, I've had some people express interest in like Angoras and English Lops and some of that other stuff. So I am working on it. Uh, we've also got some other rabbit videos coming up, but that's it for today. And we will see you next time. Happy homesteading.